The Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Mysterious Traveler. Written, produced, and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Kogan. And presenting tonight two of radio's foremost personalities, Frank Barrens and Roger DeCoe, in Death at 50 Fathom. This is the mysterious traveler inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, that it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable if you can. For tonight, we're going to venture into the dangerous depths of the Atlantic with a group of desperate men caught in a strange dilemma. It's a story I call Death at 50 Fathoms. I suppose you've been reading the newspapers these last few weeks. You saw those headlines. Mystery South sighted off Pacific Coast. And traitor vanishes as Mystery Sub is sighted. And all the others. Well, Joe Briggs read them too. As well as heard the story one evening when he dropped into the corner bar near the radio repair shop. Total damage caused by the fire was close to a million dollars. Hi, Joe. Will it be? Um, give me a glass of rock beer. Okay, one buck coming up. Hey, what's that news commentator saying about a mystery stuff? Let me listen to that. Official comment has come from the Navy Department. Except the statement, we are investigating. One rumor insists that the appearance of the mystery sub is connected with former German dictator Adolf Hitler. According to unidentified sources, hmm. Hitler is hiding somewhere in South America and being supplied by submarines. However, official circles regard this story as being fantastic. And this summary of the last minute news has been brought to you by... Du- <laughs> Mystery submarines. Hitler hiding in South America. What do they think of me? Hmm. Yeah, it's screwy, all right. But I could tell you a story that's even screwier. I know what happened to Hitler and where he is now. Yeah? Yeah. I thought the Russians found his body when they captured Berlin. Maybe they found a body, but it wasn't his. Whose was it? A double. Hitler did try to get away by submarine, see? And just... (laughs) No, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. Try me and see. Okay. Uh, Only, uh... I never told it before, you see. Uh, Not even to my buddies when I was in the Navy. Why should I be called nuts and sent up for observation? So uh, don't believe me. Just call it um, a story. And you can stand me a beer when I've finished, eh? All right, Joe. It's just a story. Check. Well, it began the night after the war in Europe ended. I was in the Navy then. I was a radio operator on board the destroyer Spindrift. It was late at night, and I was half asleep in the radio room, the receiver over my ears, when I heard it. A voice that seemed to come whispering out of no place. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Please, if you can hear me. The voice faded out again. It was a German voice, talking English good. I turned the controls, and it came back stronger. Hello, hello. This is Oberleutnant Reiner of the Undersea Boat of Wolf. Listen to me. Anybody who may be picking up this message, please listen. Nobody can help us. But it makes it easier to talk. Easier to face what's coming. Easier to face death. Yes, death. We are doomed... We know it. And yet, only yesterday, we thought all danger was past. Yes, just yesterday afternoon, as we were cruising on the surface, recharging our batteries, we thought our mission was as good as accomplished. Captain Metz was on the bridge with our very special passenger, who called himself uh, Schmidt. Though, of course, we all knew who he was. A beautiful day, Captain. Particularly gratifying after our long surpass. 
Yes, Your Excellency. Uh, pardon me, Herr Schmidt. You must not take the slightest risk as long as I am aboard, Captain Metz. We have lost, but I shall yet win. You hear? I shall win. For it would be disloyal of me to believe anything else, Herr Smith. In South America, I will make my plan. The world will think me dead. Instead, I will be hidden where I can direct our rebound. Quite so, Your Excellency. Uh, pardon me, the lookout has sighted something. Ach, oh, yeah, there's a lifeboat drifting three points off our starboard bow. Pitching and tossing on the gray waves of the Atlantic ahead of us was a lifeboat crowded with gaunt-faced men who watched with hostile eyes as we came alongside. A dozen yards away, Captain Metz ordered the engine stop. And then, as our illustrious passenger looked on with his cloak concealing his face, Captain Metz questioned the men in the lifeboat. You in the lifeboat! Who's in charge? I am, not your life. What's your name? What ship? What cargo did you carry? What port were you cleared for? Captain Warner McCaffrey of the Melton. We were a relief ship carrying food and medical supplies. From one of your murdering dogs, no fear us. That's enough, Captain Jensen. You may pull away now. The nearest land is 300 miles to west of you. Aye, we'll pull away. I'm glad to get out of the same spot from the ocean with you. Oil, man! And then, just as the lifeboat started to pull away, the wind whipped aside our passenger's cloak. And in the lifeboat, Captain Mackenzie, a burly giant of a man, recognized him. Men, stop! Look! There on the coming car! You see that smacking crack? Trying to hide his face. You know who that is? Hey! Take a good look at him. It's the master murderer himself. The arch devil who really gave the order to send our comrades to the bottom. Hey, look at him there, with his toothless mustache, trying to hide from us. I fear you have been recognized, Herr Schmidt. Help them. They must die, all of them. Turn your guns on them. That is against international law, Herr Schmidt. I order you to destroy that boat, Captain. No one can be allowed to live to report that he's seen me. Very well. Forward gun. Ready to fire. Forward gun. Ready to fire. Give them two rounds. Forward gun. Fire. Forward gun. Fire. You murdering dog. Are you going to slaughter us? Who are you? You. You are on the cunning part. Listen to me. Every one of us will be waiting for you. Coming closer. Oh, they've lost us. They're bombing at random now. Yes, we are safely away. The depth is real up. Ninety feet, sir. Ninety is enough. Level her. Level her, sir. We'll set our course at 180. Level her, I said. We're still diving. The leveling plane. He won't respond to their heart. Hey, that their champs will be operating motors and broken down. He has done it. The bombs have damaged. Ah, there wasn't a bomb close enough to break an egg. 
to come up, sir. They are leveling off. Hold her as she is. Hold her as she is. Hold her. How fast are we going up? Well, not surprising at all, sir. That's surprising. We must be. This time, 20 feet a minute. According to the gauges, we are light, not heavy. We can't still be diving. Captain, I order you to take me to the surface immediately. Do you hear? I am not as interested as you in reading the for an hour, we struggled to reach the surface, to no avail. We threw all our ballast tanks until we should have shot up like a cork, and still we continued settling toward the bottom. It was unreal, unbelievable, impossible. The crew stared at each other, white-faced, and dared not utter their fears aloud. And our illustrious passenger raved and ranted at Captain Metz, screeching about his safety, till Metz ordered him to his camp. White-faced, his black eyes wide with terror, Herr Schmidt left the control room. We continued trying to raise the Unterschied boat, Wolf, to the service. Lieutenant Heiner, what depth does the job show? Uh, Three hundred feet with a gravel bottom, sir. But uh, there's a fort in the ocean bed just east of our position. A crevasse a thousand feet deep. We are safely beyond it. Miller, our depth. Two hundred feet, sir. And we are going down ten feet a minute. But our tanks are empty. We should be going up. Nevertheless, we are going down. And as long as we are... We will bottom and surface for repair. And who said that? Who spoke there, Neutnant? I don't know, sir. Wheeler? Not I, sir. Fire! I'm there. Someone is lying. When I find him, he'll go into air. Wheeler, our death. And that friendly face. The panel, sir, as if... As if what? Nothing. Oh, Anne, as if what? Uh, excuse me, sir. I was going to say it. As if something was pulling us down. Aha. Uh-huh. What you thought better of saying it. Yes, sir. See that you continue to think better of what remark. The same applies to everyone on board. Lieutenant Reiner. Yes, sir. We will bottom in seven minutes. Prepare to make an inspection of the ship as we do. <laughs> Well, Leutnant, I have finished the inspection. Your report? Everything is in perfect order, sir. There are no leaks, the batteries are fully charged, all motors in working order, all pumps operate. Then, obviously, there is no reason we should not surface when we choose to do so. No, sir. Miller, what word of the destroyer? I have heard no propeller sound for two hours. Then we will surface. Close the auxiliary tank. Close the auxiliary tank, sir. All main and auxiliary tanks empty, sir. All tanks empty. Captain Metz, 
We have blown all our tanks and we have not risen one inch. I am aware of it, Lieutenant High. Now, do you take me for an imbecile? No, sir. It's just that it's... It's impossible. Obviously, we are stuck on a mud bottom. But the bottom here is travel, the chart says so. The chart is wrong. I say it's mud, you hear? Yes, sir. But... And so we will have to use the motors to pull ourselves free. Signal full speed ahead. Yes, sir. Full speed ahead. <laughs> We're not moving. What is it? Why have the fools cut out the motor? Uh, excuse me, sir. The engine room is reporting. I suppose the idiots have burned out the motor. No, sir. They say the propeller is fouled. How can it be fouled? It's impossible for it to become fouled on this bottom. Uh, yes, sir. They say it's not entirely fouled. It will turn. But only very slowly. As if... As if what? He's saying it turns as if, as if a lot of hands were holding it to keep it from revolving. Who? Uh, oh, imbecile! When we get back to our base, I'll court martial every man aboard. We've got tangled in a little TV, that's all. We may be able to reverse the propeller and free it. Full speed astern, Lieutenant Reiner. Full speed astern. <laughs> Something was holding it back. And to think that I, Ludwig von Metz, thought I had the finest submarine crew in the world. A pack of mewling infants. Captain! Captain Metz! Metz! Ah, oh, Herr Schmidt. I trust you, Captain Burke. Everything is quite under control. Captain Metz, in my cabin I have been hearing sounds. Sounds, Your Excellency. What sounds? From outside the submarine. Scratching sounds. Happens on the hull. They go on and on and on. They sound, Captain. They, they sound like someone trying to get into the submarine. After me. Silence! Silence. 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 You have heard nothing except pebbles being swept against our hull by the current. That is all. I tell you, it sounds like hands rapping and tapping on our hull trying to get in. Captain, surface at once, do you hear? I order you to surface at once. I am about to do so. Now, with all due respect, may I suggest you return to your cabin. Your presence here may impede our enterprise. Very well. See that you take me to the surface at once. Have no fear. Leutnant Reiner, perhaps you will assist Herr Schmidt to his cabin. Yes, sir. Certainly. If I may hold the door for your excellency. Captain. Captain Metz. Well, what is it? Captain we hear them, too. Sounds coming from outside our hull. I hear no sound. I can hear them now quite plainly on my detector phone. They do sound like the rustling and scraping of a lot of men clambering over our hull. And that... Uh, yeah. Perhaps that can bring you to your senses. Listen to me, all of you! You're temporarily stuck in the mud. A current is sweeping pebbles against us. You're all acting like children who think they see a ghost in a graveyard. You're going to be on the surface in an hour. You have my word for it. To break free from the mud, I'm going to fill the bow tank, then blow them and fill the stern tank. We'll rock the ship loose. You understand? And flood the forward ballast tank. Flood the forward ballast tank, there. Captain Metz. Yeah, Herr Leutner. The pumps are operating again. The failure was caused by Seaman Hans Jäger. Jäger? How? He went off his head and grabbed the pole of the main switch. The short circuit blew out the fuses and electrocuted him. How is all this reaction? Badly, sir. They are very nervous. Nervous, are they? I will give them something to be nervous about. That uh, scraping and scratching outside our hull. It's upset the crew badly, sir. I know it's stopped now. But the men say it's just because they are 
planning something else. Hey, Who do you mean, they... The crew says... Says that there are hundreds of men in the water outside trying to get in at us. Dead men, sir. Good man, I, sir. Do you wish to be placed in irons? No, sir. I, I'm just trying to explain the crew's state of mind. In, in spite of all our efforts, we are still on the bottom, and the men... The men are getting drunk, sir. I'll teach them a lesson they'll not forget. But of course, they're taking their cue from our illustrious passenger. If he hadn't come out here with his ravings and rantings... Never mm, mind that. He's quiet now. I gave him whiskey with a sedative. If I may make a suggestion, sir. Well, what is it? Uh, there, there is one thing that we have not tried. We have to try it. Discharge our torpedoes. Discharge our torpedoes? We must. We have ten torpedoes aboard, each weighing 2,500 pounds. That's 25,000 pounds of dead weight. Get rid of that, and we have to rise. We have to. I see you are beginning to share the hysteria of the crew. However, I accept your suggestion. Order the discharging of the torpedoes to begin at once. Yes, sir. At once. We began discharging our torpedoes. Two, three, four. And then the wolf moved. It jolted and moved. But not upward toward the surface. To my horror, as I watched the gauges, we began to move downward. Fifty feet, sixty feet, we slid ever deeper into the ocean's depths, as if down a steep slope on the bottom. After we had fired six torpedoes, we were actually a hundred feet deeper than we had been. And then the discharge of torpedoes stopped. And I went forward to find out what was wrong. It's no use, I tell you. It is no use. We're going down, not up. Down. What's going on here? Why haven't the rest of the torpedoes been discharged? You know what is going on like that. We have fired six torpedoes to lighten ship. We have just sunk deeper. That is right. Deeper. Always deeper. Our place won't stand it. We will be crushed, drowned like rats in a trap. Why are we quiet? Why should I be quiet? We all know our tanks are empty. We should have been on the surface long ago. We're being held down by a thousand dead men, crawling all over us, scratching at our plate, trying to get in. They've come from all over the seven seas just to hold us down, just to see if we don't get away. Listen. Listen to them. You can hear them now. Listen. Maya, come to your senses. It's only our plates groaning under the pressure. Hey, listen. You know better. We all know better. Who dragged us down here to the bottom? Whose hands are keeping our propellers from turning? Whose bodies jammed our diving planes? Whose weight is keeping us on the bottom? The dead. I order you to be silent. It's too late for orders. There's only one way we can escape. Give them the dead outside, the man they want. They want our passenger, the one who calls himself Herr Schmidt. We all know who he is, and so do they. Oh, and they've come to get him. You are under arrest. Grab him, you man. Hey, hey, listen, listen, all of you. Let us go get this Herr Schmidt. Put him in the computer's hoop and send him out to the dead, outside. Let them have him. Then they let us go free. He is our only home. Fire! Uh, uh, Captain Matt. I heard your interesting little speech just now. And this is my answer. Uh, hi, Captain Matt. <laughs> Does anyone else want the same medicine? And to your station. Might not continue discharging torpedoes. <laughs> That was many hours ago. We discharged all our torpedoes. And we are still on the bottom. Every few minutes we slip a little deeper. Down a slope that is bringing us ever closer to the thousand foot chasm in the ocean bed. The crew truly believes that we are being dragged toward it by thousands of dead men who have gathered outside. Drawn here by their hatred for our passenger. A hatred so great even death cannot quench it. Perhaps they are right. Certainly Herr Schmidt believes in himself. He is in the next camp. Captain Metz has locked him in. Perhaps if I hold this microphone close to the bulkhead, you can hear him. Captain Metz! Do something! I order you to do something! There are times! They're clawing at the hull to get at me. Captain, save me. I order 
are you two? You must let me die, Captain. Captain Dennis. That is enough. He makes an unlovely spectacle. Our illustrious passenger as the end approaches. Though no one can save us, there is comfort in knowing that somewhere, some human ear is hearing me. Ah! Another lurch, then. We must be on the very edge of the crevasse. It is truly as if hands, many hands, were remorselessly pulling us towards our doom. The hands of the dead? It is a fantastic thought. And yet, when one is hated as our passenger is hated, by hundreds of millions of the living and tens of millions of the slain, who can tell? Uh, There is also the curse Captain Mackenzie in the lifeboat uttered just before he died. Just a moment ago, a sharp tapping came against our house, as if someone was tapping against it with a rock. This... That tapping is in international code. It's a message from outside. A message from someone outside the submarine at a depth of 400 feet. And no living man could be sending it. What does it say? I will tell you. Ah. Another lurch. And now, we're sinking fast. We are going down into the great crevasse. 450 feet. 500 feet. In a moment, this submarine will crumple like a child's toy. But first, the message, it says, We are waiting for you, Adolf Hitler. We are waiting for you, Adolf Hitler. That's the message we are receiving, 500 feet deep in the ocean. And now, our our plates are cracking. We're we're done for! just spinning a sailor's yarn? Well, he no longer insists it's true. He just asks us to consider the story and nothing more. But I wonder, after all, it did disappear, and it's logical that he might have tried to get away by submarine, so... Oh, that brings me to my story for next week about another individual who suffered punishment. I call it, I Died Last Night. It's about a man who woke up to find out that he was dead and that nobody would... Oh, but you have to get off here. I'm sorry. But I'm sure we'll meet again. I take this same train every week at this same time. just heard The Mysterious Traveler, which is played by Maurice Tarplin. In the cast were Frank Behrens, Roger DeCoven, Robert Dryden, and Ronald Duff. Original music is composed and played by Alphanet. This is Bob Emmerich speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.